I, I'm, uh, as many of you know, uh, uh, been a, not only a fan, but a participant of the Asia Society for uh, several years, increasingly so. And I looked at the agenda that you have, and it is absolutely the right agenda. We are at a crossroads. As you all know, we are facing a potential calamity which we can avoid. We are facing something that is terribly serious, and as a scientist, I am incredibly optimistic that once we stoke up the incredible innovation machine of the United States, we can do miracles. And I really believe this in my heart. If we get the right political will, the right will among all the people of the world, we can solve this. Now, in terms of Asia, I, I'll, I'll end this by saying um, we want to, this is not a national thing anymore. This is an international thing. And what I want to do and what I think we can do is this is now a common foe, a common enemy. We, we're going to go to a sustainable energy world and not only that, we're going to share this with each other. Why? What's in it for everybody? Well, what's in it for everybody is, you know, most of the buildings we build are investments in that particular country. So you don't ship buildings from Denmark to China or from Norway to the United States or whatever. You build the buildings in that country. Collectively, we as a world have to teach each other how to go to sustainable energy, how to capture carbon, how to make more efficient buildings, how to, how to tell the youth of the world to tell their parents that they're doing the wrong thing. <laughs> you know, it's the youth of the world just as the youth of the world told the parents, wear your seatbelts, don't smoke. Get the youth of the world, and not in 20 years, but in two years, five years, to tell their parents, hey, don't you care about the world you're going to give to me? Because, you know, in the end, and I'll stop right here, the youth is always going to save us. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, thank you very much.